Hello, everyone, and welcome. We have people here from uh, all sides of the globe today, from Israel, from uh, the United States. It's very exciting. So hi, I am Ani Lupu, the Jewish Agency Israel Fellow for Hillel at FIU. On behalf of Hillel at FIU, it is my pleasure to welcome you to FIU's annual Israel Week. Every year, we organize and present a diverse series of events during this week to educate the community and learn more about the state of Israel through different aspects. Today's event is post-COVID strategy in hospitality businesses in Israel, co-sponsored by Chaplin School of Hospitality and Tourism, Tourism, Tourism Management. Sorry, I'm excited. The event today will be moderated by Oren Hertz, clinical assistant professor at Chaplin School of Hospitality and Tourism Management, and will feature a panel discussion with Israelis professional from different fields within the hospitality industry in Israel. In Israel. Uh, today we have with us Michael Hay, founder and managing partner of Vision Hospitality, Michael uh, Howard, owner and CEO of the Negev Hotel in Beersheba, Shachar Levy, a season eight finalist of TV's MasterChef in Israel, Bar Pinto, the owner of Stax, a bar in the heart of Tel Aviv, and Guy Kriegel, the owner of the Rabbit Hall, a cocktail room in downtown Jerusalem. Throughout today's conversation, members of the audience are encouraged to post questions and send them to me, Ani, and I will send them to Oren Hertz, our moderator. Uh, Oren, the stage is yours. Lovely. Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you to our panelists in Israel. I am very excited to, to meet you, specifically because I'm finally going to visit back home, Israel, uh, next month. And um, so I'm going to save your contact information so I can come visit you. <laughs> I am definitely excited to go back. It's been a year and a half, the longest I've ever been away from Israel, obviously because of the pandemic. And so I'm definitely excited to, to go back, visit family and dine. And uh, it sounds like Israel is pretty much open. I have a list of questions to the panelists. And I guess uh, we'll go down the questions and you choose whomever is feeling comfortable answering the questions. Uh, please just chime in. And um, as you had mentioned, uh, if you'd like to send me any other questions uh, that you might have, um, I'm here to, to answer them. Um, I've, uh, quick background, I've worked in the hospitality industry here in the United States. I actually, I, I immigrated here to get a degree from the program I'm teaching now. And so I, um, back in the uh, 90s, um, I, uh, <laughs> I came here to FIU and to, to get my degree in uh, a bachelor's degree in hospitality management, worked in the industry in hotels, restaurants, and private clubs, uh, whilst continuing my education here, uh, MBA and a PhD, and came back to teach here at FIU uh, later on. And so it's a great reward to come back and teach for such a distinguished hosp hospitality program, not only in America, but across the world. Uh, my first question to, the, to our uh, distinguished panel, is as follows. So how has COVID-19 affected your industry, specifically what you do? Uh, what were some of the challenges you faced and how did you overcome them? I, as one that represents the hotel industry within our little uh, uh, group of, of uh, speakers, I'll tell you that first, I think, I'm not sure if we overcame it yet, um, we, uh, like all the rest of the world, have been hit by the pandemic over past uh, March, and very quickly we realized that we have to uh, close all the hotels. So Vision Hospitality, my company, uh, develops hotels in Israel and manages them. And we do it in collaboration with Atlas Hotels. It's, it's a leading boutique hotel uh, uh, group here in Israel. We have 10 hotels in Tel Aviv and others all together. It's a portfolio of 16 and, and, and Vision also operates others. So we had within a, a week time frame, uh, we had to close all the hotels. We in Israel, because it's all based on uh, the boutique hotels in urban locations are, are all based on international demand. We had no other choice. And so we had to close all the hotels and then start realizing what's going on and, and, uh, and maintaining that type of closure. Uh, 60 days later, we started opening some of them and then really uh, waking up to a new reality where the demand is local and not international and, and we have no regional demand. 
So in other words, if the airport is closed, if people are not coming in, uh, it's all based on internal Israeli demand. And we then took uh, many different ac actions to start and focus on the local, uh, local market. And, and we can elaborate on that later on. Maybe uh, other participants can uh, share their experience. Sure, thank you, Michael. Um, so uh, again, my name is Guy. I'm uh, a co-owner of a cocktail bar and a gin tonic bar in Jerusalem. Uh, what we faced, uh, we, I'm saying we because we were a part of uh, three different bars. One of them is a gin tonic and cocktail bar that I'm a co-owner of. Uh, we also have a beer shop um, slash bistro bar and boutique beers uh, bar that's called Beer Atenu. And we also, uh, my co-owner also owns uh, the Glen Whiskey Bar. So all of our three places are um, put more, um, um, I don't, like we're trying to, um, how do you say it? Like, <clears throat> so we don't uh, usually deal with um, all the regular regular uh, alcohol. So what we do, we try to expertise uh, each in a nose on business whiskey, beers, or gin tonic slash cocktails. Um, to so we sell high alcohol uh, um, um, value. And so most of our uh, most of our customers were tourists who knew and came from the states or from around the world specifically to Biratenu to try Israeli craft beers or specifically to Glen to try uh, great whiskeys or specific to the rabbit hole to try new gins or maybe cocktails uh, that you can't find in any other uh, place. So let's say right the rabbit hole, the rabbit hole. We also uh, make our own tonic water, which is uh, I think we are the only bar that does it. Uh, that actually um, cooks its own tonic water and serve it with their gins. Um, so we had a very uh, bad problem. Uh, as Michael said, there was no airports, no tourists. That means no hotel or hostels or boutique hotels. That means no tourists for us as the business. Even after we opened, uh, we still don't have the tourists. So uh, what we had First of all, we closed all the bars and we got three places to pay for in rent and everything. And all right, so what do you do? What we did uh, the day after we met all, all four of us, we we're four uh, co-partners on the whole thing uh, and started coming up with ideas of, all right, so we're not a restaurant, so we can, we can do deliveries, but not for food. So what do we do and how do we do it? So eventually, what, eventually what we did, we stole, we sold uh, growlers, which is one liter bottles of uh, keg, like beer from the keg, and bottle cocktails, which is now very, very common in Israel, at least after the uh, COVID-19. But before that, you'd never seen a bottle cocktail or or someone selling beers in like from the keg in, in one liter bottles home. Um, so that was a big issue. And then what we did, we managed uh, and succeeded. Well, all, all, all three places are here. One of them got closed and then reopened. Um, but again, half of our customers were tourists and we kind of um, got saved by uh, our um, regular customers of all three places. All the Israeli regular customers uh, actually stepped up and, and ordered a lot of alcohol, um, which is, I don't know if it's good or not, depends on you guys, but yeah. Uh, it's a, that's a great example of how you pivot and, and adapt to situations where you couldn't really uh, anticipate. You couldn't really see it. No, no one could see it coming, honestly. No one could see it. Uh, and so it's quite amazing what you guys did. And, and Guy, I'm going to have to come visit you because my mom was born in England. And so gin runs in my veins. And so I'm going right. to have to. All right. It sounds delicious. Um, yep. Anyone else would like to address uh, this? Yeah. Yes, um, hello, everyone. So my name is Shachar, and I'm co-owner of uh, a nightclub here in Tel Aviv and two restaurants. Um, and I think our biggest problem is that all our businesses of the co of, of our company open kind of in the same time, something like uh, between one year to half a year before the coronavirus starts. Mm -hmm. So we found ourselves, you know, in the most important time that we need, you know, um, we need 
a lot of money, you know, for everything uh, to, to make manage. Uh, so it was really, really hard time. So I think in the first two weeks, we was in shock because, you know, clubs was closed and restaurant was closed and bars was closed and everything. And I think that after that day by day, we try to see how we can manage and find, you know, like different ways um, to bring the flow of the money in to cover the stuff that we need to keep the businesses alive. This is the most important for us. I think most of the companies in Israel, we didn't think about like, um, we want to do something big. We want to make everything alive to survive this time. And we was thinking in the beginning, it's gonna be like one month, two months. Nobody knows it will be like for a, for a year, year and a half. So um, uh, the second problem that we have that in Israel, uh, companies that open after 2019 didn't get nothing from the government to help. So because of that, because they didn't have the way to compare how much money we was doing before to now, they say, so they don't need nothing. So we found ourselves, you know, really, really with nothing and try in every business, we try to find how to survive. So um, good or not, what we did, we did illegal parties. So uh, to survive. And in the restaurant, we decide to start to work with Walt in different companies and produced a new, a new company, a new restaurant, a pop-up of a food that you get only in delivery. So I think these two kind of uh, thing help us to survive. And also, I think it's not only help us to survive, it's also build our name as, you know, brave and different between like all the rest of the, of the people here in Tel Aviv, not in Jerusalem, sorry, but in uh, Tel Aviv. Very interesting, Shachar. And, and you bring up a really good point for new businesses in the hospitality industry that you did not have enough time to hold money in reserves. It's devastating. And, and if, if and when, and I'm not, this is not a political debate, but if the, if the government is treating the hospitality industry as a stepchild, then it's, you got to do what you got to do. And if it's illegal parties and it's illegal parties, you got to do what, what you got to do to survive. Now, I, I'm not going to um, teach our students to do illegal stuff, but uh, I think it's very um, creative. It's just a creative way to survive because you got to a point that you just had to survive uh, in order to, if I'm reading the situation correctly, in order to, to move forward. So honestly, hats off to you. Well done. You want to move to the next, uh, can I say or? You please, Michael, yes, yes, please do. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, so I'm the owner of a uh, small chain hospitality, Domus Negev. We act in Beersheba. Uh, we have three complexes. Two of them are what's called corporate housing and one hotel, uh, the last one that was actually open in the, in the middle of the corona last August. So we opened a new hotel at August 20, and I can uh, tell after that how it was. But what we did when the pandemic started, we had the two complexes of total service apartments. And at that time, at March, the beginning of March, is, it's usually the strongest time for, I think, for the whole industry. And the beginning of March, so we were about 100% occupation in, in about when the government decided they are closing the borders. In about 24 hours, like, you know, we had maybe 90% cancellations and all our uh, foreigners, they just fled out of the country. Of course, can't, can't blame them, but there was a big, uh, people were afraid. So all of them left and then I was, I was stuck with about 35 apartments that I'm paying the rent of them, okay? And the city taxes and electricity and oh my God, what am I gonna do? Okay, at the end of the day, we are a small business. So, and we kind of live like months to months. So what are we going to, so what I did is I approached to a uh, local market, but local, real local market, okay? People want to rent a house for a month or two months for Israelis. So some of them, there were people who used to go to office and because of the lockdown, they were working from home and it was, you know, too, too stressful for them. So they wanted to go and rent a house and they paid me 
uh, the local price, but and even less. Okay, uh, I had to, to to bear the costs, but in that way, I managed to at least uh, decrease uh, the cost of, of my payment. So and that and it worked pretty well. And after a few weeks, I started looking for companies that are working in the Negev in Belsheva, because for all uh, the last year, essential workers and essential factories still worked. Okay, so actually I got to a new agreement with the staff of the hospital, which actually I didn't have it before. But when it started, you know, like the phone just stopped ringing. So I approached the management in the hospital and, you know, and this con uh, connection is still uh, until now. We're still working with the staff of the hospital and also for some of big essential uh, workers that are, are still dealing in the Negev and in Beersheba. So this is what we did. And in August, we opened the hotel, and this is also we're pretty much a bad, very bad time. If you want to open a hotel, don't open it in the middle of a corona crisis. Uh, but then again, we were more or less lucky because there was a big company who came for, again, for an infra infrastructure works for about two or three months. So they helped us in the beginning. But after that, we, we also had to close. And now more or less things are getting back to normal. That's amazing, Michael. It's um, it, it's scary, isn't it? I can only imagine you, you're faced with 90% cancellations. And, and you, as you had mentioned, you live month to month. Your revenue comes in month to month. It is, it's a uh, deer in the headlight. Like, what do we do? Uh, but it's really ingenuity and uh, s some good ideas led you to, well, you survived, obviously. And um, so that's amazing. And for those who do not know, Beersheba, it's, it's a beautiful Southern city. Uh, it's the uh, gateway to the, the Negev, which is a desert in Israel, and uh, it's an opportunity to promote Israel. Israel has uh, snow in the north and desert in the south, uh, which is quite, uh, quite amazing, uh, quite an amazing climate. And it can cross the country, what, in a six-hour drive, I think? Maybe more today, I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've, I've crossed it from, from the Hermon to, to Eilat. <laughs> uh, oh, Michael, yes. thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, anyone else would like to address this question? I have a few more questions here, if not. Okay, let's move on. Next question. So in your opinion, what are the most critical changes that we are going or we will see post-COVID in Israel in your field? So, so how is it looking post-pandemic moving forward? Uh, some changes that, that are really obvious to you. In terms of the hotel, in terms of hotel development, uh, Israel for many, many years has suffered from in the, the geopolitical instability that affected uh, dramatically the desire of developers to develop in Israel and invest in Israel. So the hospitality industry uh, and hotel investments were always uh, uh, regarded as a very uh, risky, um, risky field. Over the past 15, 15 years, uh, because of uh, the, the, the geopolitical relative stability here in Israel and the fact that uh, in, in terrorism, global terrorism became a, a global phenomena, uh, more and more uh, developers started going back to the hotel industry. Israel in general, Tel Aviv in particular, uh, grew and evolved into a, a major internet, a strong international destination. A lot of city breakers come here, and so the the market really uh, started uh, evolving and growing. And and today, it's a wonderful Tel Aviv, in particular, became a wonderful uh, boutique hotel destination with many hotels along the beach and inside. Uh, inside the city, and so I think that uh, that that the pandemic probably would sort of push back the desire to develop hotels here in Israel. To what extent, I don't know. I'm sure it's not going to be. It will take a while until we get back to the numbers of uh, of. Uh, 2019, which was 2018, 2019 was the strongest year, were very strong here. 
I think it will take a while until people go in until I think it will take a while until uh, people will invest in, but I don't think it's going to stop and I'm absolutely sure that it will come back. I think that we, in terms of what we do, we will, uh, we will we'll learn basically to accommodate and to work with the local market, the local market more. Uh, we've, we are creating now uh, um, um, a loyalty program to the local market, which we never really had. You need to understand that we were only 15% of our business was, was uh, Israel. So uh, for us, it's 85% of the business was closed and we needed to, to, to make 15% of the past business into 100% of the current business. So we needed really to focus on the local market, understand their needs and, and really start cater and, and, and advertise to that market. We never advertised, we never did things that are very basic, we never really did because we really never uh, dependent and attracted the local market. So I think that post COVID, we will, we will learn to more to work and appreciate the local market more. And hopefully that will uh, strengthen our mix. Uh, but all, all in all, I think that uh, as things go come back and, and restaurants will open and, and, and we'll go back to the same type of business uh, that we have and, and, and we can't really the, Urban hotels in Israel cannot really depend on, on just local demand. So that's it's in, instrumental for us to have the international demand coming back. Oh, yeah, amazing. Well, I, I can, I, can uh, I agree with uh, Michael. And I do see also, uh, we hardly work with any domestic uh, audience, we're also mainly foreigners. And this is, I, for us, it's probably the biggest change is to host and accommodate families, families with children, uh, which is also an opportunity now, because even if I look now to July and August, uh, even in, in, in every August, like it, families fled here, you know, maybe I think maybe more than a million Israelis go out abroad. But these Israelis are going to need a vacation in Israel. Okay, so we are now start, actually starting to plan how we are going to prepare ourselves for these families when they come to us, okay? We usually used to host business clientele, but now we understand there's a, a change and we have to adapt ourselves also to families uh, for couples. And also I must say, advantage, Be'er Sheva was never, a, it was never like a leisure uh, spot. It's starting, but really very, we hardly got any tourists uh, from abroad. It was mainly business tourists and also hardly any Israeli tourists. But now in the last Pesach, we were like 100% uh, fully booked with Israeli travelers. Uh, maybe Be'er Sheva was their second or third option, but uh, other places all around Israel were fully booked. Uh, so in that case, we, we did enjoy it, uh, this audience. But then again, I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, we're going, the business is going, going to be back on, trail, on, on track. Michael, I have to tell you on a personal level, Be'er Sheva has a very uh, special place in my heart. I serve in Shifta uh, in the Negev, and so, uh, you know, it's the closest city. Um, I, can, I can tell you, Oren, people yeah? who come here to Be'er Sheva, they say the last time I was here is when I stopped to pee here on my way to Eilat. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure. Be'er Sheva yeah. has like, totally changed. We have an amazing mirror who have changed the city 180% just, he, ha, he has done a revolution here. And That's there are so many things to do here, part of the fact that it's a gate to the Negev and to Midbar, but even in Beersheva, you, you will be totally surprised from all the attractions you can do here, okay? So when you come to Israel, I invite you as uh, my guest uh, to stay, to visit the city, and I, I, I promise you a great time. Uh, thank you very much. I have great memories of great shawarma and great falafel. Uh, <laughs> so, absolutely. Better than the spam we ate, you know. <laughs> Loof. Um, great, Michael, both Michael. Thank, thank you very much for that. Uh, anyone else would like to address uh, changes that you're anticipating? Uh, 
I can talk about the nightlife. Hello mm-hmm. to everyone. My name is Bar Pinto. I am a co-owner of a neighborhood bar in the heart of Tel Aviv. Um, so after a month, the people was in a lockdown and was starving to party. Uh, of course, it was a legal party and of course it was a, a local party inside houses, but it's not the same. I go to a club or go to a bar. Um, without the, the, the mind that the police can cover every, every minute. So we uh, finished the lockdown, the third lockdown two months ago. And from the moment that we opened, I feel like I'm in a war because people are coming in huge amount, huge amount of people are coming to, to the bars, not only my bar, all of the bars and all of the clubs that they reopen in Tel Aviv. And it's it's surprising and it's amazing. People are not afraid from the Quran because most of them are vaccine and people just want to go out and have a night that they can drink and have fun. Uh, in my bar, we did a, um, I don't know the name of uh, English, Mifza. Uh, we did a one-on-one from Sunday to Wednesday. Promotion, yes. Uh, we did a one-on-one uh, on all the alcohol from uh, Sunday to Wednesday. And I don't know, I think that people like it because people are coming and coming and coming and coming. So when in a business, uh, in the business way method, we are uh, becoming, we are thinking maybe to cancel it uh, because uh, before the Corona, it was only on Wednesday. And now we are thinking, okay, if people are coming, maybe we will cancel it, but we are not cancel it because we want people to come and have fun and drink and not think about it. And the second thing that I can say in, in the business way, uh, unfortunately, not all of the bars uh, open right away. I think that my advantage was that we didn't wait for the third. It was the they separate the third uh, quarantine to three levels. And we did, they said that in the third level, all the bars can open, but we didn't wait for the third. We opened uh, at the second. We call ourselves restaurant because in our license, we are a restaurant, not a bar. So if, uh, if the cops came uh, to check us, we say, hey, look, Officer, we are a restaurant, we are not a bar, but of course that we, uh, we open as a bar. And the third thing that I can say that in the beginning, me personally and a lot of uh, my colleague was afraid to see how the police uh, respond, how the city respond. Because in one end they said, okay, you can go out from the quarantine, but uh, they limit the people because in the second, uh, the second quarantine, when they open all the all the market it was the chaos and um, the the corona was up and because the amount of people was so huge we was afraid that the police the city will shut down us maybe even the government but the the police never came the city never came no one came uh, it was amazing to to see that the city understand the needs of the of the bars or of the local business uh, owners that they need the the free and open uh, activity and just work and not handle all of the bureaucratic and all of the things i can say one more uh, last thing that we have the the green label it's called in english the green label and uh, we have to check it our customer um, the truth is that uh, no one is checking this, or maybe I don't know more in a more in a restaurant than bar. But most of a lot of places, not most, a lot of places don't check this because it's technically uh, impossible. Because people are coming in, coming out. It's in some point in the night. It's chaos, so you can check everyone. Uh, maybe in the beginning of the of the evening we are checking hey you you have green label but you know at 11 12 one when people are surrounded all of the place and you don't have really control on this uh, and on this point you have a lot of uh, meaning business and 
of course, of the pandemic. But uh, if we are saying that everyone is vaccinated, so amazing. In the hospital, in the hotels, we we try to monitor that uh, to the highest level, and we are not hosting anyone that has that was not vaccinated or has uh, the the green passport. But one more thing that you need to understand in Israel, uh, people are not allowed to leave the country right now. So basically, effectively, we have the, the highest numbers of uh, Israelis in Israel right now, and they're all uh, crave for uh, entertainment and, and, and vacations. And so uh, streets are very full and, and the, the, the roads are full. And so, and, and yeah, if you walk along, uh, Dizing of uh, Street here in Tel Aviv, which is one of the main streets with a lot of bars and restaurants, you see thousands of thousands of people sitting down and, and enjoying. And so we, I mean, I, in that sense, we really feel that, that the low demand that stayed here in Israel. The, the big question would be, uh, what would be the effect once they open the borders and people are allowed to go? Because here in Israel right now, um, people fly, tend to take vacations three, four, five times a year and go abroad. Uh, whereas this year they they hardly were hardly able to do that. Once they do open uh, the airport, probably a lot of Israelis will go out. I don't know, and we we hope very much that a lot of tourists will come because Israel will be be one of the uh, greenest places to to be and to leisure in. So hopefully that will work for our advantage as well. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too, that there's going to be a, a, a shift or a balance as the borders open up. You're going to get more uh, tourists coming in uh, as Israelis leaving and, and uh, going abroad. Shachar, yeah. you wanted to add something? Yeah, I just want to add like uh, two things. So I agree with Bar that it was like, in the beginning, people was really afraid because we need to understand that we had like a lot of people without work and people was afraid here that people will not go out and be afraid from the pandemic or because they don't have money. But uh, in the minute that we open like two months ago, it's just like bombed. Like I think nobody see the businesses working so well before the coronavirus. So maybe it's because all the people are here now in Israel. Maybe a lot of people didn't have problem with money. You know, they keep getting their salary and they need to spend it about something. They don't fly away, they don't do nothing. And, and, and the third option is also because 30% of, of our kind of businesses closed in the Corona time. So also the variety of options that you have are smaller. Um, I just will say about the three. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's a combination. I don't know what is the, uh, the yeah. difference. Between, but I want to say about the green pass because also in the police. Um, so I agree that in the beginning it was really afraid because the police, you know, in, in the time that this is, is currently, they check us all the time. It was like really hard work. But in the time that they are open, they were really, really nice to us. The mayor, everyone, the police, they really try not to find problems, you know, because they understand the situation. Uh, I can tell you also that in restaurant, the green the green pass is working, uh, you know, so-so, but in nightclubs, it's it's working perfectly. We build a system with, um, we, uh, with the app that working here, that people that buy tickets to party have to upload their green pass. We need to check it and then only they can get the ticket. And without that, they cannot come inside. And you know, in the beginning that we showed that the, to the main officer of the police in the city here, he was really impressed. And this is, I think, why he give us, you know, so many space and don't check us all the time. But um, so I think it depends the kind of the places because big events, because I can bring today, my club can, can head something like um, 800 people, but with the green pass, uh, the maximum that you can get is 50% or 300. So the maximum that we can get is 300. Uh, but still, you know, we check everyone in this system and it's working well. Um, and I also was really surprised. I don't know if it's also like that in the other businesses that the money that people spend, 
you know, per customer is bigger. It's increased. Mm -hmm. So people spend more money. People want to drink more. People want to party more. And the customer are really thankful. That's something that yeah. not always was before. No, like in before the customer, why this restaurant is so expensive. Not they they want the maximum for the less money. And today I feel that a lot of customers are really, you know, feel that we are together in the same situation. And I think it's important. Amazing, amazing. I think too, we, we also see that people are, they, they, once they leave home and come to us, they are willing to pay uh, I wouldn't say whatever, but they're willing to, they're very generous with themselves, but they expect a very good experience. I think that one of the, the, the most important things or the, the realizations this year is that you can do a lot of things from home and you, and, and you don't really need to leave home, but if you really want to enjoy life and, and enjoy with other people, you need to leave home. And once you leave home, and you look for your experience, whether it's a dinner at a restaurant or a drink at a bar or a night at a hotel, you're willing to spend, you expect a lot. We have to deliver it. We have to deliver it to the maximum effect. And once we do that, then people are grateful and they have great time and, and, and you see that. Absolutely. There, there is a great um, desire for people to, to go out. We are social animals. It's just how it is. Uh, and by the way, when I, when, I hear, uh, when I hear people say, oh, you, you teach hospitality management. Oh, this is, I just want to tell them, listen, I, <laughs> I don't know which world you live in, but uh, the world that I live in, people go out and dine, people travel, people go on planes and they crave vacations and it will not only come back, it will boom like you, like, you, uh, like many of you said here. Uh, this past Friday, uh, my friend and I went out to dinner. We had to go to six different restaurants that turned us away because there was no room. We ended up cooking at home. We just, there's absolutely no room. And, and even diners, you know, the uh, lower end restaurants, anywhere from high end to low end, we're like, okay, we'll change, you know, dress accordingly if we need to go to, to a high end restaurant just packed, absolutely packed. Why? Because people were locked down, locked in, and they are craving just what you have said here. They're just craving to get out. Uh, and so the prediction also, if we go on the academic side, the prediction for the hus hospitality industry at large for 2022, 23, and 24 is way above 2018 and 2019 that were good years for the hospitality industry uh, worldwide and in America. So the future, the immediate future is very bright. I mean, you're in the right place at the right time. And this is what I tell students too. You know, you're here in this program right now and you're about to graduate uh, and you, there's going to be so many openings and so many jobs and a need and a desire for qualified, educated people in this industry. So the future is looking great. That's, uh, that's always a, a positive thing. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. We're doing all right on time. I have more questions. Yeah, we're good. Okay, no one's bored yet. That's good. Yes, we have like 10 more minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. Do you know what? Let me jump to this question because I really want our students to, to hear that. And if we have time for more questions, we will. Um, um, okay, so someone asked about the Green Pass. So let's go with that. So uh, perhaps you can explain the Green Pass in a bit more detail because we don't have it here uh, in the United States to my knowledge. Very easy. If you uh, if you had Corona or you were vaccinated and you're healthy and you were vaccinated, two shots, you get a green a green passport. I, I can show it to you here. And then once you uh, come into a hotel or a restaurant, you just have to present it. And once presented, uh, you are you you are free to go in. So oh, that look at that. And Whoa. there's a barcode here. And some, yeah, this is uh, cool. If you don't have green card, you are not allowed to <laughs> go inside the place. Yeah, it, it this was is, this is so simple. It was Actually, wrong the beginning also... because it was static, static picture. So we got a lot of people that, you know, just like change it in Photoshop and stuff like that. <laughs> So uh, we asked to see, you know, also the ID together. And what is good about this app that because you have the, the movement, you see the animation. Right. It looks like this. So you can uh, see that yeah. it's not a picture, it's harder. 
And, but still we get a lot of people that come with, you know, different passport that they have, you know, the ID and the, and the green plan, but you know, we need to check it. Um, also in, you can see, you know, in this system, uh, what it's open, when you can go and stuff like that. What is the limit for your own part if you do it at home? Uh, this is the idea. If it's work well, it depends, I think, the businesses and also it depends um, the cities, let's say like that. Interesting. Interesting. Thank you. I can say about the my industry in the bar in one set is this. If, I'm go if people are going to a party, so most of the people plan, okay, we'll go to a party tomorrow. But bar, especially local bar, most of our clients are like, Living, uh, living in the neighborhood, they're like, okay, let's go to the stacks, you know? So they can predict it. So they can a uh, reservation in advance. So this is why it's so problematic to my kind of business to keep the green label, but. Sure. Sure. Yes. Now, would you know how it works with, uh, this is a bit of a personal question because I'm, I'm arriving next month and of course I'll arrive fully vaccinated. Uh, so does it work for, and I am a dual citizen, Israeli and American. Uh, so, so does it work the same way, I, I presume? Yeah, if you if you bring a certificate that uh, shows that you were vaccinated, you land in Tel Aviv and it's fine. We actually got an, an indication that you can, uh, uh, we are now, we will be able to accept tourists need to make to do a uh, maybe a test prior to your flight and then another test once you land here in Tel Aviv and then when you're and then you won't need quarantine uh, when you're here and you can go freely and wherever you have you just present that uh, good to know I can tell you that that we didn't get information about that from the government yet mm. they also only yesterday they started to talk about the tourists will come in late May and June and also groups but I know that now I have tourists here in Israel because still people come to Israel. We have tourists, we have people that lived here, they are not Israeli citizen and they cannot connect to the system, to the Green Pass system. So it's, I think it's complete. I, I'm sure that between this time to the time that you will arrive, that we start like get a lot of tourists, they, they will find a way to fix that. But now it's more bureaucratic way and oh, wow. stuff like that. Interesting. Well, thank you for that. That was a bit of a personal question there, just to make sure they won't turn me around. Go back home. Uh, <laughs> I won't accept it. Nah, -uh. it's been a year and a half. I need to see my family. I miss my dad. I miss. If you're my... Israeli citizen, you don't have any problem to go inside. Perfect, because I'm entering with my Israeli passport, so that's good. That's good to know. No, why? Actually, just few, uh, up until a few weeks ago, for like almost two months, Israel closed the borders also for Israelis and some of some yeah. of them abroad and it's the only country in the world that did something like that and people were were uh, were forced to wait uh, a few weeks before they could come back sure. but now everything is open that's fantastic which leads to the next question if we have and this is a question from uh, someone in in our audience uh, what do you think the winter and 2022 will look like as more people get vaccinated? We Amazing. Hope, yeah, we hope we hope that uh, as more and more people get vaccinated in Europe and in the United States, and because Israel here is almost uh, fully uh, vaccinated. That it will become, at least for the next few years, the preferred preferred destination for uh, COVID-free destination, if you may. Hopefully, for uh, tourists that are uh, that have anything to do with Israel in terms of uh, relatives or uh, the uh, Jews that are coming to visit, but not only, also um, others. And, and if that happens, we might we might be able to. Uh, recuperate some of the business that we lost. But uh, it seems like here in Israel, we did because of various aspects of the way we operate here in terms of HMOs and stuff, we were able to, to facilitate the vaccination uh, process very easily and very effectively. And so everyone is vaccinated and, and it's, it, it's a very safe environment for people to come in. And hopefully that will 
attract a lot of people and a lot of tourists. Israel has been in the forefront of the news as a, a leading country in the world uh, for herd vaccination, which, which is quite amazing. Uh, because because really everyone, everyone here has, has uh, medical insurance and, and, very, and it's very accessible. So once we were allowed to, va to be vaccinated, then it took like two days, three days for everyone to, to get it. So the, and that, that was, and obviously the persistence of the government to get all the, the vaccines here to Israel also obviously helped. And I think, I think there's another part of it is, as Israelis, we think logistically because of, because of the army, because of the military. We're constantly thinking log, uh, logistically, uh, which is very different than other uh, cultures, really. Um, and being a small country, thinking logistically and everything you had mentioned, Michael, just led to, to an amazing outcome uh, when it comes to uh, herd vaccination. But it seems like Biden is doing a very good job also. Uh, <laughs> it will take a little more time, but it seems like he's doing a good job. Yes. I think also Israel really good in short, you know, in short problems, you know, that yes. we need start to do something really fast, you yes. know, for not for, if, if it's like two weeks problem, we're really good at that. Yeah, if it's something long, people start, you know, to like a lot of Jews together, not agree together, and it starts to be like a lot of problems. So I think this is the big difference between, uh, you know, the vaccine situation or compare, you know, to rest of the coronavirus time that we was not in the lead, let's say it like that. Sure, sure, Shachar, good point there. Yeah, excellent. Uh, anyone else would like to add anything to um, what the future holds for us? So hopefully I have uh, uh, time for, for the question that will really help students uh, who are on this panel or will listen to it uh, later on. Uh, so what has helped you to get where you are and what advice would you have for others who want to set off a similar direction, a similar path? Because all of you here, um, I've read your bios and, and I'm, I'm listening to you and you're very successful at what you do, which, which is absolutely amazing and fantastic. So perhaps one piece of advice you can, you can leave us with uh, that we can take from the experts. I think, yes. Uh, I, think, I think that, um, well, I don't think, the last year was a war, okay? It was a war without missiles and we didn't see bodies on the street, but millions of people have died. And unfortunately, Israel, you know, has suffered for, you know, the last decade for many wars, shorter and like real wars. But after every war, opportunities are, there's a lot of opportunities. And actually, if you're now a student and to open a business now, I would say it's pretty good for you because, you know, unlike myself, you don't have now like loans of a whole year that I had to take from the bank in order to survive. And for me to, to bring back these loans will take a few years now, you know, to, to get back to my, what I was before the Corona. So now there are many, many opportunities, maybe some business that are you know, struggling, maybe you can take over uh, them and even open new business because people are still looking to travel. People are still, they still want to go and eat outside and to have fun. I mean, and the industry of tourism and especially the of hotel, it's been around here for about 3,000 years together with prostitution, okay? So <laughs> these industries are not going to vanish. They're, they're here to stay. And so you just maybe me, need to be more technological, maybe uh, planned a little bit more of a self distinction. But in general, continue. I do believe it's good time also to open businesses now. And, and, and never give up, you know? It's just, uh, we, are, we were at the war, okay? I hope, I really hope we're at the end of the war, okay? Nobody knows. But, uh, but in general, don't give up and just continue forward. It, it will end someday. Thank you, I Michael. Agree. We appreciate you. Yeah. I, I wanna add one more thing. Yes, guys. Uh, so the, this situation, all the, the whole COVID and, and the quarantines and everything, um, in the in the hotels or restaurants or, or bars in the hospitality businesses you will always get stuck you will ha always have uh, pop-up problems some of them will be small some of them will be huge you need to reinvent yourself all the time you need to think 
outside of the uh, outside the box uh, you need to realize okay now this is the shit situation yeah it's a shitty situation but that's the situations what do you need to do from now to make it better not not the same maybe not the same maybe not as good but better than what it is now because now you have a problem how to fix it not don't cry oh why this happened to me or or why this problems always come and then I have enough problems now think all right that's the situation what do you do next how do you advance from here um, so I think that's the most important thing um, and this COVID-19 like pandemic really showed us that the businesses the businesses that that reinvented themselves and thought about okay what's going to be next what's what we're going to be next uh, those uh, uh, places uh, or most of them uh, uh, or I hope most of them survived the COVID-19 and and reopened or what or going to reopen uh, uh, themselves. And uh, some of them even yeah, continuing yeah. with the deliveries as well. That you know we never even thought about doing deliveries. And today, this morning, I went uh, uh, to be returned to cook tonic, and and instead of cooking the tonic, I helped them for three hours because uh, they got a huge uh, order of foods and beers. Uh, from Tenbis, which is a delivery uh, company that we started working in because of the pandemic. Uh, so in the first three hours of this morning, I actually doing something that is not my job, but I helped uh, my my co um, my coworkers to do their job, uh, and, and that's something that we never even thought about doing the deliveries be before the COVID nineteen. Amazing. I think you know, Oren. I I grew up here in uh, in Tel Aviv, and since I was very young i when people ask me what do you want to do when you grow up i said i want to have my own hotels and everyone told me you know in israel it's not a it's not a place for the hospitality industry first because the jewish mother doesn't really like you to work as a server that's one of the things and second you know the the business is not really booming here and we have a lot of other problems and issues and so if you want to study hotel management, go abroad and, and develop a career abroad. So I, I, I moved to NYU, uh, to New York. I graduated from uh, the, the NYU Hotel School. Awesome. And, and I worked in New York for a few years at, at different hotels. And then I, I specialized in hotel appraisals at HVS. And then I, I was uh, preparing for my next move. And September 11 happened. Everything changed in New York and everything changed obviously for the travel industry and the hospitality industry. And I needed to recalculate my route. And I moved from New York to Paris and from Paris back to Tel Aviv. And it turned out that in Tel Aviv and Israel, I was able to make the most advanced moves in my career and build it to what it is today. And, and it taught me that first, never, never leave your dreams. Always keep on dreaming and, and believe that you can accomplish whatever you dream of. Second, there is no one path to it. So keep on moving forward and, and reimagining your next move and don't be discouraged of, of, every, of anything. Third, hospitality industry is cyclical. There are downs and ups and when it's downturn like now, that's the time to do the next step. This is the time where we can think about the new experience. This is the time when we can take advantage of, of businesses or situations that need help or need uh, uh, imagination. And once you realize that, then it, basically we are now, for, for us, for hotel investors, we are now in the biggest, op the biggest opportunity in the hotel uh, industry that has been I think in existence since the last 20 years and probably hopefully in the next uh, 20 to, four, to 30 years. So that's the time to really act and move, for, move on and create those uh, uh, advancements that will enable every one of you, whether you, dis you start your career or you're in the middle of your career, uh, to really make advancement and change. And, and, and that's, so if you look at it from that point, that's a wonderful opportunity and to graduate into that you can uh, from here it's going to uh, evolve and move forward and 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 be exciting these are really excellent words uh to to really end this uh panel because we are out of time um 
Michael Hay, Michael Howard, Guy Krieger, Shacha Levy, you guys are amazing. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for giving Thank us you. the time of day. We really, really very much appreciate it. Thank you for uh, helping our students uh, better understand the industry at different facets of the industry and how great the hospitality industry is and how um, great it's going to be, as uh, Michael just said, in the next hopefully 20 uh, years until next time we kind of have a slump and we'll pick back uh, up again. Uh, thank you to uh, Hillel at FIU. I'm going to shut up and let you uh, let Hillel uh, finish this uh, uh, this wonderful panel. Thank you, Oren, for being such a great moderator. Um, thank you for all of our panelists, uh, Michael Hay, Michael Howard, Shachar Levy, Guy Krieger, and Bar Pinto, who had to leave earlier. Um, for all of our participants, when you go to Israel, please visit their establishments. Um, we will send you afterwards the list and the names, if it's with Birthright, MTF Leadership Trip, uh, or on your own. And uh, I want to thank uh, again our co-sponsors for today, Chaplin School of Hospitality and Tour Tourism Management. We also invite you everybody to join us this afternoon at 12.45 for Yom HaZikaron ceremony, which is the ceremony for the Israeli fallen soldiers. And tomorrow morning for a panel discussion about national response to COVID-19 in Israel at 10 a.m. Uh, all the information you can find in the link that uh, we put in the chat. And thank you again, everybody. Uh, that was a thank lovely you. way to open the day. Good luck. And have a lovely evening back in Israel. Yes. Thank you very thank much. You. Good night. Thank, thank you, everyone. everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.